Today, I'm going to begin building a sub $500 version of the Figure 01 or any other humanoid intelligent robot. To begin, I have this Meccano or Meccanon something robotics kit that I found on Facebook Marketplace yesterday for just $40. Now, one of the reasons I'm starting this video zoomed so far back is because that FL Sun printer over there is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 35 inches tall and you can see that this robot towers over it. So I did get this with its brain, but unfortunately it was sold for parts. I managed to get it working and running, as I will show right now real quick. And we'll turn the power supply on, see if we get anything from this. There's that. Those aren't touching. Turn this on. I heard the robot do something. I always do have a fire extinguisher here just in case, a small one. I have had to use it and it works well, which is good. So, that's my... Oh. Your service. <laughs> whoa, whoa, holy shit. <laughs> I did not expect that. Please don't move forward. You're going to unplug yourself. It's telling me to download firmware. So I've begun tearing this robot down. And the first thing I'm going to do to it is give it some level of intelligence and a face that actually gives you feedback as you're speaking to it. So in order to do that, I'm borrowing the technology from my R1 robot, which if you don't know about, here's seven seconds of information. I'm wondering about the scientific ramifications of getting my junk tossed around by a robot sometime in the near future. As a scientist, I must caution you against engaging in such activities as they could have potentially harmful consequences for both yourself and the robot involved. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how to mount a projector into this. And I've borrowed the head frame mechanism from one of my older free projects called the Minibot. It's very simple, it's smaller, and I find that it fits the shape and size of the robot much better. So in Fusion 360, I just drew up a little projector caddy. So the projector slides in here and it will hold it. It's not joined together in the middle because I wanted to print it without needing support. So I just printed two pieces vertically like that. And it does have recessed nuts in it because I like that. I always do that on my main robots. So what I'm doing right now is just sizing up how it's gonna fit. So the projector will mount in here. So I got this mount installed, just the front one. And I'm pretty happy with how it went, especially because it was a first time measurement that worked, which is nice. I actually find that I like using this flat ruler better when I measure. I found this in my basement. It's made in West Germany, so it's obviously very old. It's besides the point. So I have the projector here just to test fitment. It slides right in and stays. So I have to put the back piece on and figure that out because obviously there's more distance there. It won't mount to the front like it will here. And obviously it sticks out a lot. So I will have to do something design-wise about that in the back because it is a rather egregious hump that it will have. But now I can get to actually projecting the face onto this thing, which I'm looking forward to. So I've got the projector mounted in a way that I'm satisfied with. The back mount is obviously a bit different than the front mount, so it just holds it in like that. They're joined together in the bottom, and there's also a middle support brace in there, which is a little difficult to see. Then if I come here, you can see the projectors mounted in the middle there. And then around front, if we can get focus, it sits like that. So I do kind of like the way that this looks. And I think I might make them like a little backpack or something like that. 
So someone came in here right now and saw this, they would probably say, sir, please step away from the robot. But I just have it like this because I need to get the projector plugged in. I'm going to, for at least the first iteration, use a Raspberry Pi 4. I usually like to do all of my software related stuff on Android boxes because I can just quickly whip up something cool in Unity and then transfer them. But because this has the GPIO headers, I also have this stepper motor driver board. So I'll be able to just interface that directly with the existing motors on the robot, specifically to begin with uh, the wheels. If I were to do an Android solution, I would have to also use an Arduino and I would have to make them communicate with an HCO6 Bluetooth module um, for commands. So this allows me to just streamline everything with a single Python script and combine chat features as well as movement. So my first test with the projector on, there's no video going to it, it's just the no signal thing is good at least because the measurements in terms of the reflection of light from the mirror seem to be okay in that the projector's image is actually fully on the face mask, which is something that requires a bit of consideration. When I was building that robot there, I had to do a large amount of measurement. And the reason that uses two mirrors is because it reduces the actual throw distance necessary for the projector to project a clear image. These projectors are not designed to project closer than about three, four feet. So this obviously needs some uh, like down sampling in terms of the optics, if you will. I don't know if that makes sense. So just to give a demonstration real quick, I was just messing with the mirrors. And this is basically the way that you can get stuff like this to work is just trial and error. I'm sure hypothetically there's some mathematical formula to doing this, but you know. <laughs> so I had it looking real good before with this mirror somewhere around here and here. So kind of like the big robot essentially. And there you can see it is much clearer. So now I'm going to work on just getting these mounted like this. And they will have adjustability just in case there's variables that can't be controlled in terms of the design, such as flex and movement and things. I built adjustability into the one over there as well. But this is, uh, as you can see, good resolution. To mount the mirrors simply, just for adjustment purposes, I'm reusing my main robot's design of the mirrors, but I've just scaled it down to proportionally represent the size of this mirror compared to the original size. So I'm going to print that now. So as we can see now, even though it's a bit hard to see because there's so much light saturation, the image is relatively clear and centered. I did a little micro setup as you saw of my bigger robot's rear mirror and I just kind of glued it on because I will redo all the head frame and things like that once I have the measurements proper. So now the next step, which I've moved on to starting, is wiring up the Raspberry Pi to the motor driver board, which I will then plug into the feet of this robot and make it so that it's voice controlled, so that there is a link between its chat GPT and movement. So I'm going to do a quick bench test of the voice activated motor response, if you will. Also, don't mind this, please. This is one of those keyboard mats, but to be honest with you, I use it more of as a work mat, kind of like that is intended to be. So I have the motors wired up to the driver board. I have this Raspberry Pi connected with the microphone so I can speak with it. And as soon as it launches, which it has right here, I'll be able to get this going. So hypothetically, if I say run motors, or is it start motors? I totally forgot. Oh yeah, 
Start motors. All right. So if I say start motors, it should work. Start motors. All right. That's cool. So they're going backwards and you can see it says uh, running motors. I just want to make sure I didn't screw something up in the code, which I most likely did. So I'm going to run the original Minibot software, which should work fine from a speech perspective. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, buddy, what's up? Okay, so something's wrong with the uh, with any new or tasks code, you may have. so I'm going to fix the glitch. So, um, <laughs> being that it's north of 5 in the morning and I should probably go to bed, I think this is where I'm going to leave off on this video with this <laughs> terrifying view of the face, which is upside down. So that's going to be dealt with. Obviously, I'll, I'll flip the Pi game image. And then following this, I will mount all of this nicely into the robot, akin to the way that the projector is mounted in a way that fits in with the overall image of the robot.